how to optimize the distance, bring Asia and Europe together, and expand the market's geography. Coming up in the program, Road to the Future. Kazakhstan and China, the shared history of the people whose ancestors are living on the territories of these countries is more than 2,000 years old. According to Chinese written records, in 121 BC the very first caravan of goods set off from China's city of Xi'an to the Fergana oasis. Its route lay through the Fire Mountains and Tenshan Peaks, the steppes which were inhabited by the Huns and Saka people. And as you may have guessed, this was the Great Silk Way. Hello, my name is Oleg Boldarev, and I'm inviting you to delve with me into one of the economy's most interesting sectors, tourism. Thanks to tourism, the citizens of different countries meet each other, and as a result, borders between them are getting erased. Modern China-Kazakhstan relations are developing on the basis of factors such as a long shared border, membership in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, mutual regional interests, and synchronization of national economic strategies. And the prospects of development of logistics and transit promise to expand the partnership. As a result, the two neighboring countries, connected by the threads of history and geography, will become even closer, including in the tourism sector. The list of inventions made in China includes the most unexpected things. For example, a water wheel. It was built in China in 31 BC, or 1,200 years before the Europeans. Over time, different uses were found for the wheel. In particular, they began to be widely used for making ancient means of transport, for example, for chariots, which were used as a transport thanks to horses. But if the horses are set up in front of the carriage, as it should be done, then it turns out the very first to do this were the ancestors of Kazakh people, which laid the foundation for the civilization of nomads. This bold statement is supported by artifacts which were found at the excavation site of the archaeological memorial Botai. This ancient settlement is located in the south of the North Kazakhstan region in the Ayurtau district, not far from the Nikolskoye town. Here on a territory of 15 hectares, bones of horses along with livelihood items were found, which attest to the process of domestication of horses that took place here. When Radichev wrote in his poem, Trip from St. Petersburg to Moscow, I am traveling fast along the railway tracks, alone with my thoughts. How fast was the train going? 27 kilometers per hour. And he felt like he was flying, imagine. And how should the horsemen feel, who are racing with a speed of 27 to 30 kilometers per hour across the steppes? This person becomes one with the clouds and becomes a true Kazakh. Today, excavations at the Botai settlement continue, and every new discovery once again proves that a globally significant adaptation of humans to their surrounding environment took place here, and a stage of development of civilization was being established, which earned the name nomadism. Coming up, from the Great Wall of China to the ancient city of Otrar. It is hard to imagine how much time and human resources were required to build this huge structure. You, of course, may have guessed that we're standing next to the Great Wall of China, the age of which historically is quite impressive, more than 2,300 years. The length of the wall, 8,851 kilometers. As a comparison, this is approximately a fourth of the diameter of planet Earth, and other parameters are more humble. Its width, 5 to 8 meters, height, up to 10 meters. The wall commences in Qinghuangdao. This is a small port city on the shores of the Yellow Sea. From there, twisting like a snake and searching across more than half of the country's territory, the wall ends in central China. Here in the city of Zhuyangguang, its most western part is located. The construction of the wall started following the order of China's emperor Qin Shi Huang. The decision was motivated by the often occurring raids onto China's territories by the nomads, particularly Mongols. As a result, this huge structure was built 
which is considered to be one of the seven wonders of the world. The construction of the Great Wall of China was done in stages. 221 BC is considered to be the year of the official start of building this defensive structure. Back then, the majority of the construction process involved big ground embankments. The period of the most wide-scale work on the Great Wall of China was during the ruling of the Ming Dynasty, from the 14th to the 17th century. During that period, instead of the earth embankments, bricks were laid and some sections were rebuilt. This is the form in which the Great Wall of China was preserved until our days. Among cultural and historical sites along the Great Silk Way, the city of Otrar, which is concluded into the UNESCO list of World Heritage, holds a special place. It was established three centuries before the construction of the Great Wall of China commenced. And geographically, Otrar was located on the borderland zone between settled and nomad cultures, the western part of Central Asia. Thanks to the advantages location in the 12th century, it became a large center for trade, crafts and culture in its region. It had palaces, baths, mosques and the biggest library of Central Asia, which in terms of its volume was on par with the infamous libraries of antiquity. That is why merchants who traveled from China to Khwarezm often stopped in Otrar to sell some of their products, rest and stock up on provisions. This is the southwestern wall of the city of Otrar. Behind that, the city extends for around about 30 kilometers beyond that, so a pretty big place. Now, what can we say about this wall? Well, it had many different purposes, one of which was defense, of course, and they found the, in, within the bricks in there some special fired bricks. But even this defensive structure could not withstand the force of Genghis Khan's army. In 1219, after a prolonged siege, the city fell. By the way, after almost two centuries, during the preparation for his next campaign, the great medieval leader Timur caught a flu and died here. From here, his body, along with the solemnities, was transferred to Samarkand to the Gur Emir Mausoleum. Coming up next, Terracotta Warriors and the Golden Man. The 2017 was announced as the year of China's tourism in Kazakhstan. In the run-up to this, one of Kazakhstan's airline companies launched a new flight, Almaty Sian. But this route was not chosen randomly. Every corner of Sian is literally enveloped into an atmosphere of ancient history. Here the infamous Wild Goose Pagoda and the biggest singing fountain in Asia are located. But the most important treasure and artifact of Sian, which is one of the seven wonders of China, is the mausoleum of the first emperor of Qin Shi Huang dynasty with its renowned terracotta army. Qin Shi Huang did not want to part with his army even after death. That is why he ordered to make 8,099 clay warriors. According to the legend, they would become vessels for the souls of warriors fallen in battle, and then in the afterworld, they would protect their emperor. These figures were made individually, handmade, and with the use of different techniques. On closer look, it is possible to see that each statue has unique features and facial expressions, and despite the high number of the figures, you would not find two that are alike. The process of making the warriors included a number of methods. First the body was made, then the arms and head were attached. Then for a couple of days they were heat treated in the furnace under a temperature of 1000 degrees. After that the clay would turn into terracotta, a material that is in terms of durability is on par with stone. The Terracotta Army is just a small part of the huge burial complex. It includes the shrine chamber and at least 100 additional rooms. Many of them have still not been opened. Kazakhstan also has a number of artifacts relating to ancient warriors. The most significant of them, after the Declaration of Independence, became one of the most important symbols of the country. And I'm talking about the Golden Man. By the way, his sculpture occupies a central place at the Independence Monument, which was established in Almaty. The history of this unique archaeological find commenced in 1969, when in the Almaty region on the left shore of the Sik River, the Sik necropolis was discovered. In one of its mounds, researchers uncovered more than 4,000 ornaments of the Saka period. 
of special value was the golden armor of the noble warrior. By the way, the details that were used in the ornaments of the warrior's head were winged tulpar horses became part of the country's national coat of arms. Coming up next, the sea motifs of tourist routes. Yanyunggang. From Chinese language, it translates as a port that is located between a mountain and an island. The city Lianyunggang is located precisely this way, and at the same time acts as a port. As a rule, cities that are close to the sea and have developed maritime traffic always have space for tourism. Especially popular among tourists who come to Lianyunggang are the beaches on the coast of the Yellow Sea, the evergreen park Sumovan, and the famous monkey mountain Yuntai. At the moment, we're near the entrance to the homeland of the Monkey King, which is a character in the famous Chinese novel, Travels to the West. Annually, many tourists come here, ascend this mountain, and learn about the story of this novel. Kazakhstan does not have direct access to world's oceans, but across its boundless territories, closed water systems with a rich flora and fauna can be found. The Caspian is considered to be a pearl among them. This enclosed lake is a relic of the ancient Tennis Ocean, which existed in the Mesozoic period. Since the times of the Kazakh Khanat, the eastern part of the Caspian Sea has been considered the sea gateway of the region. Today, the Aktau International Sea Trade Port operates here, one of the main transport and logistics brands of Kazakhstan. And at the same time, on the shores of the Caspian, a center for the development of tourism is being established. <laughs> We are devoting a lot of attention to tourism and are trying to create all the necessary conditions for people to be able to come here in the summer, on holidays, to swim and enjoy the beautiful view of the sea landscape. Kazakhstan's most famous resort on the shores of the Caspian is Kinderli. It is located 210 kilometers away from the city of Aktau on the shallow basin. The warm current, clean sandy beach, prolonged summer with clear sunny weather all create a unique environment for a full-fledged and comfortable holiday. And from here, entertaining excursions can be made across the ancient territories of Mangastau, which boasts a great number of historical and natural monuments. Who knows, perhaps it was nature which inspired the Sufi prophet Shakpakata towards artistic endeavor. And he, whilst competing with nature, created this wonderful structure, the Rocky Mosque. The construction materials for its erection was always nearby. These are shell deposits and sandstone, which are relatively easy to process. Coming up next, the Shakpakata Mosque and the Wild Geese Pagoda. The name of the mosque Shakpak Ata literally translates as Flint of the Elder, and according to the legend, the Sufi wise man got his name due to the strength of his weapon, which in battle with enemies caused them to fly off like sparks from Flint. Overall, there are burial grounds of nine elders here, but mainly we worship three of them. They are Yerjan Hazret, Khedashata and Shakpak Ata, and Shakpak Ata holds a key place among them. The Shakpak Ata Mosque was built in the beginning of the 14th century. This is one of the first architectural structures which attest to the presence of Islamic Sufism in this region. The walls of the mosque are marked all over with drawings. By the way, here it is possible to see depictions of animals, which by Islamic canons is inadmissible, and next to them an open palm, as a symbol of the five foundations of Islam, and at the same time a protective talisman. All the space around the mosque is permeated with the spirit of mystery and power of human beings, which in the harsh natural conditions of Mangustau were able to build this structure, despite the fact that in the summer there is no way to hide from the scorching heat and in the winter from the intense cold. The city of Chang'an, according to ancient records, is the first capital of China. It is more than 3,000 years old. This is where the emperor's headquarters of China's dynasties were located. Over time, not only the name but also the status of Chang'an was changed. Today, the city is called Xi'an. It functions as an administrative center of the Shanxi province. In terms of its population, it is third after Shanghai and Beijing. And at the backdrop of the new Silk Way, this is the largest metropolis.
more than 100 Buddha temples are concentrated in Xi'an. The most popular of them is the giant wild goose pagoda. It was built in 652. Initially it had five stories. Religious statues and relics were set up on them. Around the pagoda, a Buddhist monastery was built, which is decorated with the monuments of leading Chinese poets, thinkers, artists and scientists. Coming up next, through the thorny paths towards the internet and the stars. For the development of special economic zones, in China the focus was channeled on three factors – individual approach, investments and foreign markets. A successful example of realization of special economic zone projects is the Xi'an Zone of High Technologies and Industrial Development. This is a true high-tech city, which is visited not only by business people, but also curious tourists. More than 100 plants are concentrated on a huge territory of 500 square kilometers, and they all specialize in information communication and computer technologies. <laughs> Annually, foreign enterprises ship abroad products in the amount of up to 22 billion US dollars. This is one fifth of the entire export volume of the Shanxi province. The Baikonur Cosmodrome is not just a star harbor of Kazakhstan. This is a true cradle of the space industry of Central Asia. From here, practically every month, artificial satellites, rockets with high-tech equipment and piloted ships are launched. On April of 2001, the American Dennis Tito set off into space from here as a tourist. He flew around the orbit of planet Earth 128 times, and each time cost the first space tourist 150,000 US dollars. Of course, not many people can afford to go on such a trip, but an excursion at the Cosmodrome, visit to the Space Museum are affordable to many, including within the framework of the tourism program of the International Expo 2017 exhibition. Coming up next, educational tourism along the new Silk Way. Among the young people of China and Kazakhstan, educational tourism is becoming more and more popular, because it allows to combine pleasure with something useful – education and holidays. That is why today in China one can often meet students from Kazakhstan and in Kazakhstan students from China. Since childhood it was my dream to study in China. Before coming to China I had a completely different vision of it. On Fridays we get together and make Beshparmak. Dastan, Ablikim and Dana are studying at the Northwest University of China, which is located in the city of Xi'an. They're fluent in Chinese, knowledgeable of national traditions and dream of applying their knowledge to projects which today are considered to be of priority in Kazakhstan. For example, those connected with the development of logistics, transit and international trade. Xi'an is the starting point of the Silk Way. At the moment, to me, it seems that there are great prospects for the future here. In turn, the University of Xi'an are looking for opportunities of doing language exchange programs with the universities of Kazakhstan. We are also trying to establish contacts with Kazakhstan's university to be able to send our students to study Russian in Kazakhstan and in the future Kazakh language. The International Alliance of Universities of the New Silk Way. This new educational platform was created within the framework of China's initiative One Belt, One Way. More than 60 universities universities from 22 countries of the world became members of the alliance. Kazakhstan is represented at the International Alliance of Universities of the New Silk Way by the Al-Farabi Kazakh National University. We need to exchange experiences, organize summer schools, conduct excursions in order to get to know each other better. Thanks to this, people will reach a level of mutual understanding and will develop friendly relations. Within the framework of the Educational Alliance, the universities of China and Kazakhstan are in close contact with each other. For example, at the Beijing University of Foreign Languages, along with other languages, Kazakh will be taught. And students from China are studying at the Al-Farabi Kazakh National University.
I came from Urumqi. At the moment, I'm studying international law. I decided to get a higher education in Kazakhstan for two reasons. First of all, it is considered to be one of the best in Central Asia. Second of all, my parents live and work here. By the way, students from China who are studying in Kazakhstan are making plans regarding their holidays. They want to spend the winter in Almaty to take part in the Universiada to support their country's team. And in the summer, they're planning to visit the International Expo Exhibition, which will be held in the capital of Kazakhstan, Astana. Those who have a lot of friends are free, like in the steppes. Those who do not feel constrained, like between the palms of two hands. The idea of this ancient Chinese proverb can give us a hint. When people of different cultures are in close contact with each other, want to live as friends, they have more opportunities for development. Today, within the framework of cooperation which has been set out by the national strategies of Kazakhstan and China, tourism can play the role of an informal intermediary, fortifying the relations between the two countries, neighbors living in a large house called Asia. You are watching the Eurasian Corridor. Until next time, en route, which opens up new possibilities for Kazakhstan.